Three rolls are ready for the run to the rose. Over 1,200 metres. And the gates are back. They're off and racing. And Dahl missed the kick. Out the back together with Militarise and Libertad jumps sharply with Butch Cassidy and Moravia being sent forward out wider. Don Corleone's up running fourth, close up then Cylinder, followed by Chrysler improving in advance at General Salute. Then came Nadala and Militarise's last of all. Moravia's doing plenty of work here from the wide draw. Moravia's going to cross the entire field to lead. Out by length now as he steadies the speed. Butch Cassidy keeps going on with the job. In advance of Libertad, then Don Corleone and the White cap further back to the favourite cylinder. General salute on a wide path from Chrysler Nadal and militarised last of a bunch field in the run to the rose. And Moravia shows the way from Butch Cassidy breathing down his neck. A length and a half to Don Cullion from Libertad. Cylinders all cluttered up at the moment from General Salute as they race inside the 300 metres. It's Moravia in front from Butch Cassidy. Our cylinders not out yet. Moravia still in front from Butch Cassidy. Now Nadal is starting to thunder home. Moravia in front from Butch Cassidy. Cylinder's out now. He's charging, going to Moravia. Oh, Cylinder got out of jail to win the run to the rose. Cylinder just edged out Moravia. And third between Butch Cassidy and Nadal. Then General Salute, militarised, flashing home. Further back to Libertad and Chrysler. You're in an epic finish to the run to the rose. He'll get up, Cylinder. He was never going to win. He's pulled... A real rabbit out of the hat. Late he's dashed at them. It looked as though a few bubbles were going to burst there as Moravia was holding off Butch Cassidy. Libertad couldn't go on with it. And Cylinder looked like he'd run out of time. But here he is. The Godolphin Blue and Cylinder. A return. A win in the run to the rows. Well, hard on your mouth stuff. Uh, narrow. Bunch finish, but commanding win. Sets himself up to improve again going into the Golden Rose, and who knows after that even an Everest. Uh, but a bunch finish, so much to talk about. The leader was terrific doing work, uh, uh, Moravia. Nadal missed the start and was enormous from the back. Militarised, he'll keep for another day. So tick, tick, tick across the board. Um, obviously, Libertad, more was expected there, but... Plenty to analyse about this race. Yeah, there was plenty of good runs in there, Ronnie. Um, cylinder, gee, that was pretty impressive. You know, I don't know what happened at the start. He was back a lot further than where we were expecting him to be. We were expecting him to do, you know, his own thing up in front, but he had to come from behind. A few sticky moments there getting through. Oh, Moravia, what a run. Had to do a lot of work early to get over and find the fence. Got a couple of little cheap sectionals just before the home turn, but um, taking nothing away from the winner. That was outstanding. Well, James Cummings has now won this race five times. He has now won it four times for Godolphin. He won it back in 2014 with his grandfather, Bart, when they were training in partnership with Hallowed Crown. But it's been a race dominated by Godolphin. They now have Cylinder, In Secret, Animo, Bivouac, Astern, and Exosphere as winners. Going back to the Dali days, the Maroon and White, Denman, Desuetude. Uh, going back to the Cerise days before the Ingham sold to Sheikh Mohammed. Uh, in the John Hawkes days, El Cambio and Paratroopers. Uh, ten. Ten in the last 20 years. From the Cerise to the Maroon and White to the Blue. And he's back here, Cylinder. What's he going to? What price is he going to be in the uh, Golden Rose? Uh, Tim can check that for me. Prior to the race, he was 450. But he's not only eyeing off the Golden Rose. There's a hell of a lot of talk that he could also go into the Everest as well. Do they want to win a Group One and then worry about the Everest, or are they just going to go full steam ahead? But the Golden Rose, of course, is next. Well, congratulations, uh, James. Um, five times James Cummings has won this race. You shared one with Bart, but it's been a great race for Godolphin. Now, how good is Cylinder? Oh, he's up there, isn't he? Uh, he's, you know, he's a, he's a, he's just a powerhouse of excitement. Uh, you know, the horse arguably shouldn't have won the race, but he's uh, he's been able to find the narrowest of gaps, if you could even call it call it a gap, and uh, and he's and he's burst through and savaged the line. Uh, 
a very a, a very good colt with a great record. But um, you know, our best two-year-old who's now undefeated two, two out of two this prep. That's um, that's very exciting for us going into the spring. So, you've turned the two weeks into the Golden Rose. Instead of talking about what could have been. You can talk about a win because it almost got away from you. Yeah, it did, and and, and you know cylinders had to learn you know a tiny little bit more right racecraft today too with you know a few horses up ahead of him and you know forcing him to switch off over six furlongs with um, you know cluttered up between horses. That's you know that's good for this young colt, and uh, and now he's had plenty of experience that'll help get his back down and and he should be you know absolutely cherry ripe a fit horse in two weeks and. And uh, and uh, you know I think I think he's uh, I think he's well and truly um, an interesting contender for the Golden Rose. Okay, Golden Rose. Beyond that, do you talk Everest? Are you interested? Uh, do you want to have two horses in Secret and Cylinder in the big race? Oh, I think that it would make a lot of sense. And uh, this year we've got extra time between the Golden Rose and the Coolmore, but. Uh, the Coolmore is a great race for the horse too, and the, you know, he, you know that, that that race at Flemington should have lots of his preparation, uh, uh, you know, mapped around. But uh, but the Everest is going to sit there neatly from the Golden Rose this year, and uh, and and so it's it's very achievable. But you know, it, it, it'll depend on what happens in two weeks, how the horse is, and uh, and, and and we've got plenty of time to decide that. But he's uh, his win today was you know, pretty special, wasn't it? In a top race, and it's the type of race that. Regardless of what the form of the horses is going into it, and you know some of them are untapped, the race you know you can rely on the, the you can rely on the race for bringing the horses up to to, to run the rating, and uh, he looked pretty exciting to my eye this afternoon. Great to have him back. Thank you. Good on you, James Cummings. Corey, are you with Nash? Uh, no, Channel Seven. Okay, just Channel uh, Seven are wrapping up their commitments with the uh, jockey, and then Corey will bounce right in there. 19.67. So Sunshine Paris earlier, much quicker. They break 1.9, 19.67, home in 33.87. 1.967, home in 33.87, 2, 8, 10, and 7. Uh, Tim Ryan, a price for the Golden Rose? $4. So $4.50 into $4. Duff, just a quick comment before we get to Nash. Sunshine in Paris, looking at both races, she's gone much quicker. Yeah, she has, um, but that was a, a funny race where he got... He, he sort of was out in the back foot, didn't find the play the map as we expected in front, held up, held up, held up, and rallied. So a lot to like about him, and that'll be a run that he'll, <clears throat> he won't... He'll just bounce out of that run really well, I reckon. He'll be with pllenty of improvement to come. So he hasn't had a gut buster. OK, here's Nash. Congratulations, Nash. Isn't it funny how... Hey, Red's trying to get your job. <laughs> Isn't it funny how races change complexion at the start? Like, we had you down as the, the leader and taking control of the race, but take us through it. Yeah, look, um, the, the stable never really puts you under too much pressure to be anywhere. They, they, they'd like to see their horses in their comfort zone, and although we sort of went out on the track with the plan to still lead, from the time I hit the ground, I was... Under the, you know, I was going to be... I had to wave the white flag, basically, and say, well, if we can't win it here, we'll, we'll try and win it later, and... Um, Look, the horse just conserved energy the whole race and we're in a really awkward position and um, it was just a matter of not making a mistake at the wrong time. I just, just had to buy me time until the run come and when it did, he was explosive through, through not making a mistake on him. Right on, mate. Cheers, pal.